We begin with some breaking news. Four people are hurt after a crash between a school bus and a pickup truck. So the Grant County Sheriff's Office and fire officials are on scene right now. They're at Road 27W and Road O Southwest in Grant County. The bus was from the Waluk School District. Again, this is a breaking story. We are working to get more information. We'll bring that to you just as soon as we have it. Well, good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News at 5 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. And I'm Whitney Ward. Thank you for being here. We are starting off with weather now because it certainly has been a wild week or, or more actually here of weather here in the Inland Northwest. Yeah, we've had snow, ice, freezing rain, and now we are facing water on the roads and highways from melting snow as the temperatures rise throughout the region. So let's get straight to Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Lagoon now to tell us more. Yeah, you know, depending on who you talk to, this is either the greatest thing that's happened in the past two weeks or the worst thing that's happened in the past two weeks. Temperatures still sit at 40 degrees and it's almost a full half an hour after the sun has gone down. It's that kind of warm thanks to our overall weather pattern. But because of that low atmospheric moisture and the cold sink down at the ground, basically the snow or ice still on the ground, you're getting a little bit of patchy fog, basically Deer Park to Newport to Sandpoint and then out in central Washington, kind of butted up against the foothills of the Cascades. You're seeing some reduction in visibility there. We've got a little bit of rain. That rain stays in the forecast the next few days and down just outside of the Tri-Cities, a little bit of activity. It looks like around Walla Walla, a little bit of sleet coming down. And overall, that's kind of how we stay. A little bit of scattered rain continues throughout the day tomorrow and then eventually tries to move out tomorrow evening. But then we build in yet another round of fog before rain returns Wednesday afternoon and evening. So it's kind of that. Are we going to see the sun? Ah, I had a lot of faith in it earlier, but instead now I'm thinking our next chance of sun doesn't arrive until Thursday afternoon. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. Meantime, in North Idaho tonight, the recent winter weather may be to blame for a sinking boat. Yes, yeah, Crem 2 Shannon Mowdy is showing us now. It wasn't the only incident on the lake over the last week. It was a sight to see at the Coeur d'Alene Resort Marina Monday. It's definitely going under. A site Jennifer Fitzgerald just had to check out for herself. Well, of course, there's a lot of uh, talk about what happened on G-Dock, and so I wanted to see that, but I also wanted to check on our boats down on D-Dock. Her boats are still afloat. The same cannot be said for this one. And it wasn't the only boat to go down on Lake Coeur d'Alene. Last week, Eastside Fire District responded to this sinking houseboat. The district tells Creme 2 News it's unknown what caused the houseboat to capsize, but it has been floated back up to water level since. It's also still unknown what caused this boat to sink, but Fitzgerald guesses recent weather had something to do with it. You know, we had lots of storms, and then we had a lot of snow, and then we had a lot of pre precipitation, so there was some weight. So um, I don't know whether or not the boat just had succumbed to the weight of all of the snow, ice, and wind, and everything else that we've had. I did speak with someone with the Coeur d'Alene Resort, which owns the marina and rents out these slips, but they had no information on the boat or what caused it to go under. It is definitely held up by the lines and whatever buoyancy the boat has. Shannon Mowdy, Krem 2 News. The remains of the last known victim of Gary Ridgeway, the Green River Killer, have now been identified. Investigators confirmed those remains, previously known only as Bones 20, are that of Tammy Lyles. In 2003, Gary Ridgeway led detectives to Kent Des Moines Road, where partial remains were found, but at the time, police were unable to identify them. The King County Sheriff's Office now says DNA from Lyles' mother has confirmed the identity. Ridgeway confessed to the killing of 48 people in 2003. Lyles was the final known victim to be identified. The man accused of murdering four University of Idaho students will be back in court this week. Attorneys for Brian Koberger filed a motion to reconsider his request to have the grand jury indictment against him dismissed. Now, that request has already been denied once, but Koberger's defense team says there was misconduct by the prosecution, plus a lack of evidence and a biased grand jury. That hearing starts at noon on Friday. In other top stories, the FAA is telling airlines they should check the door plugs on another type of Boeing 737. The 900ER is an older model than the MAX 9, which was the one that had that door panel blow off earlier this month. That plane is grounded nationwide. There are about 380 of the 900 E9s in the country, mostly operated by Delta, United and Alaska Airlines. Aviation analyst Scott Hamilton says the two planes are similar, and that is likely why the FAA is recommending the inspection. And if I were a passenger, I certainly would not have any hesitation about getting on a 900DR. 
Uh, I think the fact that uh, you've got all these 900 ERs that have been out there for, uh, in some cases, decades, they've gone through heavy maintenance checks. Hamilton says it takes four to eight hours to complete the inspection, and it's unlikely flyers will see any disruption. Delta says it's already done checking, while United and Alaska says they are already underway.